Uh, hello, I am uh, Shriyash and this is my colleague Rishik. Uh, we are here from, uh, from Vicharak. Vicharak is a small startup based out of uh, Surat, Gujarat. Uh, we will be talking about our work related to reconfigurable and heterogeneous computing uh, and solutions. Uh, a bit about our company, Vicharak. We are a small team of around 50 individuals. Uh, we are very diverse in that we have systems developers, we have uh, compiler engineers, we have RT designers, PCP designers, all working on a uh, concise, complete solution. Uh, and uh, our, our spirit towards problems is that uh, we identify a greater grand problem, we simplify all those problems and do whatever we uh, have to do to solve them. Uh, hence the diversity in uh, people that we have. So this talk has been divided into four chapters. Uh, chapter one, we I uh, sort of try to explain what the problems according to us are with uh, modern compute. Chapters two and three are uh, ideas for solutions, and chapter four is what we have done so far to solve this. Okay, so uh, back in 1975, Gordon Moore of Intel uh, observed. Uh, an interesting thing, uh, uh, interesting thing in uh, chip design uh, that every 18 months the number of transistors in our chip double. Okay. Uh, around the same time, Robert Denard also observed something uh, that uh, the as the number of transistors grew, the power consumed by per nanometer square of a chip uh, remained constant. Right. Another thing, uh, way back I think in the 40s, uh, was uh, John Van Neumann who suggested a general model for a computer where we have a CPU, a RAM and a channel between them. The RAM contains instructions and data uh, and CPU fetches instructions and data and runs it. Uh, the Von Neumann bottleneck is uh, this channel between them uh, uh, where we need to fetch instructions and uh, data back and forth. So, I mentioned these because these are uh, hot problems uh, in that uh, there is a need for solution. So, uh, Moore's law is slowing down, uh, Denard scaling has almost ended, uh, one and bottleneck has plagued us for more than 80 years now. Uh, so, what does uh, the modern compute look like? Uh, we have uh, CPUs, GPUs and occasionally we are starting to see ASICs. Uh, CPUs are really good at running uh, things like operating systems. Uh, but they may not be well suited if uh, performance is a massive constraint. Uh, GPUs again are very good at vector arithmetic and they have provided us a lot of leeway in uh, imagining uh, modern machine learning. But again, GPUs are uh, very good at only vector arithmetic. What about problems that are not uh, just involved matrix multiplication? Uh, and uh, we are also starting to see ML accelerators uh, in the form of ASIC chips. Again, these ASICs, the biggest issue with them is a uh, high engineering cost, upfront engineering cost and a lot of skill requirement. Uh, so, uh, uh, should we restrict ourselves to these processes that we see uh, every day? Uh, is a question I start to ask myself. Uh, some examples that I give for problems that are slightly challenging to solve by uh, modern compute. Uh, the first one is, uh, I imagine an application where we have a lot of peripherals and uh, uh, a requirement for massive compute. Uh, so imagine a, a automotive uh, car, a self-driving thing. So we need compute for object detection. We need many peripherals because we are driving uh, real motors in real time. Uh, second example is about uh, unusual number representation, so non-fixed with computers. For example, uh, terminal computers. Uh, in the modern compute would essentially emulate using 8 bit uh, ar arithmetic uh, the ternary computer. We are not really of using ternary if we imagine them. Um, third uh, is uh, new architectures for uh, old existing problems. Uh, so uh, we have had MLBs for a long time. Uh, now, recently a paper was published on uh, polar over of networks. Uh, CANs uh, very briefly and naively uh, are basically an optimization over uh, MLPs. And they are, from a compute perspective, slightly different. 
So what happens to the A6 designed for uh, traditional MLPs? Uh, and now it's essentially a task for new A6 to be designed and we repeat the one two year cycle of A6 design again. Uh, and the last point is uh, we want to do all these things and at the same time we also have to be wary of uh, power consumption. So we need uh, fast computers, good computers uh, and very very power efficient. So in conclusion, uh, the free lunch quoted by uh, uh, Moose Law by uh, improving hardware technology uh, is coming to an end and uh, new first principle architectures need to be thought of. Uh, so, in, in order to talk about these new architectures, uh, we lay down two key ideas. Uh, these are reconfiguration and heterogeneity. Reconfiguration is the idea that uh, there is a processor that can be programmed to implement a newer circuit. And I'm talking circuits, not programs. Uh, heterogeneity is an idea that a good computer, uh, that a good compute system uh, is something that integrates all the processors of different specialities uh, together into one uh, integrated solution. Uh, heterogeneity uh, answers the question that whether we should get rid of CPUs and GPUs. Uh, we should not. They are very good at things that they do and a good computer is something that has all of these. Uh, so, in order to achieve this, there are two key challenges that we uh, have identified. Uh, the first one, I mentioned FPGAs here, I'll explain what FPGAs are later in the slides. Uh, it is an integration of a reconfigurable computer with the existing architecture uh, is uh, inconvenient right now. And uh, second problem is writing new hardware is much more challenging. So it's uh, not the same as writing Python programs. Uh, hardware design is uh, much, much more tedious and is full of challenges all the way. Uh, so, what is reconfigurability? Uh, we are in reconfigurability, we are essentially designing digital circuits. Uh, so, digital circuits are gates and connection between those gates. Uh, there is a thing called FPGA. Uh, FPGAs are circuit emulators essentially. So, they, they implement the gates through, through tables where they store their, uh, uh, through memories where they store through tables of those gates and uh, switch boxes that allow us to communicate, uh, connect. Uh, different through tables to implement our envisioned circuits. Uh, hardware is written using a uh, high level uh, programming languages. Uh, the umbrella term for them is HDL, hardware description language. And then there is a compiler that uh, takes this HDL and turns it into real hardware. So, what's uh, problem one that I discussed? Uh, problem one is that it's very inconvenient. The number one reason for inconvenience is a lack of a concrete programming model for FPGAs. GPUs enjoy a very good programming model. Uh, for FPGAs, there exists none. There have been attempts at uh, porting OpenCL and, uh, and friends to FPGAs, but in the end, I think OpenCL is essentially a model for uh, GPUs. So they imagine FPGAs like an ASIC, uh, OpenCL uh, programming model. Uh, what we suggest is since FPGA, the key part of it is uh, being field programmable, a true programming model for FPGA would have reconfigurability as its uh, center point. Uh, so, the, what we suggest, which is the key driving point of this uh, presentation, is that uh, reconfigurability should be imagined. The architecture uh, that we imagine with reconfiguration is uh, one that has no instructions. Uh, and uh, how we do it is we take an algorithm and we implement hardware for it and we just send data to it. So since uh, the hardware is custom designed for that algorithm, there is no metadata that we need to send with the data to compute what we want, which the metadata being instructions in traditional computers. Uh, this is the key slide. Uh, on the left is a one-level computer and it's very familiar, I don't want to dwell on that much. Uh, on the right is a flow-based computer. What we do are uh, programs in general are essentially function compositions uh, and each function describes a manipulation on data. So all these functions can uh, be turned into hardware and uh, be connected in the form of one continuous flow 
uh, the data from CPU where it originates uh, just flows through this reconfigurable chip and comes back without any manipulation. So there is no back and forth involved. Essentially, there is no instructions involved in this. Uh, this very quickly is a uh, exemplary uh, DSL. Essentially, I'm trying to uh, suggest what the programming model should look like. Uh, instead of designing hardware in C++, we are only designing the connections. This describes a, a hardware that has a tensor input, a JPEG encoder, uh, an ML engine code, and a tensor output. Uh, the uh, line 6 is what drives it. So calling that uh, function will create hardware or what we described earlier will flash that hardware on the reconfigurable chip and will send the data. Uh, this is what that hardware looks like. Uh, the top three parts, this color, color basic here, top three are uh, JPEG encoder and uh, the later parts are an ML uh, accelerator. And all of these have been connected through a compiler that would be designed. Uh, now chapter three is uh, on the difficulty of writing new hardware and my colleague Rishik will present that. So, uh, hi everyone. So, uh, since we are needing uh, reconfigure computing, I'll explain by Shreyas here. So, uh, let's understand the ecosystem around uh, writing hardware around uh, FPGAs and making realizing your applications till the hardware level. So, uh, here at we are at Vichara trying to uh, we identify these three problems are uh, as major, and then we are, we are trying to optimize few problems, uh, which I am going to explain in later slides. So uh, first problem is uh, writing hardware is hard. It needs a domain specific uh, understanding how you are going to uh, implement your, uh, your algorithm and debugging in the hardware level. So it, it needs a nanoscale debugging and uh, and also when you want to customize yourself in the software level, every uh, the software ecosystem around FPGA uh, are basically a proprietary tools and also uh, architectures, if you, even if you want to change the FPGA architectures internal in the hardware level. Uh, it is uh, it is also proprietary, and uh, the that is one problem. Another another is the flow uh, when you are trying to re, uh, write your algorithms level to the hard uh, hardware level. It uh, there are few uh, there are series of steps uh, that uh, that they are hap that are happening. Basically, they are uh, that involves NP hard and NP completeness uh, problems which are happening in between. Uh, that is one that is. One have uh, one of the things that that is happening between CAD uh, from starting from application to the hardware level. Uh, another is uh, there is a huge gap between uh, the industry standard CAD tools and uh, the research which is happening in the present uh, academic or uh, industry sta industry level. So uh, first uh, to understand all these th uh, all these three problems, uh, let's understand the CAD tool flow. Uh, how exactly happening in the present ecosystem? So. This is a standard diagram, Boolean expression, logical synthesis, technology mapping, place and out, and bitstream generation. So uh, each, here, each and every phase is a compiler phase. As you can see, uh, in the, here, if you see each and every, uh, as I say, when I say system log and a bare, bare minimum netlist or map netlist, they are basically intermediate representation of each and every phase. So uh, let's understand the first phase. Uh, in the logical synthesis phase and technology mapping, uh, basically you are uh, trying uh, you are changing your boolean expression to the uh, register transfer level language or representation uh, and next you will be mapping to the uh, fpga specific primitives so uh, the, that is what happening in the uh, synthesis phase basically here it's a circle uh, circuit minimization problem uh, it, it it is basically like np completeness and another is uh, mapping your uh, now your map, your there is a netlist which is mapped to the high FPJ uh, primitives. Now you should be placing on the hardware, and uh, uh, that is that is happening in the pl placement phase. And the, after you uh, place the nodes on the hardware, there is a specific uh, route you should be following to uh, connect these nodes. So that is happening in the uh, routing phase, which is with respect to the uh, FPJ architecture. And uh, this, the finding uh, the uh, optimal uh, routing, it, it, it is a NP hard problem. Uh, so uh, with this, uh, this is basically a cat tool flow, how exactly happening in the present ecosystem. And uh, we at Vichara are trying to optimize a few uh, 
try uh, we try to explore few uh, problems and then uh, we came up with these three solutions uh, and we are trying we, we are still exploring these problems uh, so one problem is uh, uh, if you, uh, when you write your hardware basically you are just uh, connecting to uh, two different hardwares or two different modules so uh, i would say uh, when we uh, when we uh, let's say we wrote a hardware for some problem and uh, another another there is another application which uses this uh, 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 hardware so we are going to connect this and then uh, we are uh, we will connect uh, we will connect this netlist as a uh, uh, basically a direct netlist uh, connections basically we will connect this hardware and that uh, that is uh, that is happening with the dsl compiler so and there is a caching cache optimizations for uh, interconnect compilations and yeah uh, this one here so uh, another problem is uh, gpu uh, will connect this uh, gpu routing so at the end uh, we will show what vh which are uh, have in uh, have done till now so very quickly uh, this is a massive problem uh, so we started with designing our own hardware uh, this is a uh, vaman vaman is a single board computer it has an fpga and a cpu on it it's the size of uh, of my palm here vaman uh, yeah this is basically the test bed of all the problems that we are so trying to solve uh, we have implemented two uh, applications so far one is a cnn accelerator that uh, takes a model and for every model generates a special hardware uh, that is most optimal for it and another is a periplex periplex is a peripheral peripheral generator uh, that takes a uh, json configuration of all the peripherals we want abstracts them on uh, linux as if they were connected on the cpu directly uh, so i'll skip the conclusion uh, uh, this is where the extended slides are we are also hiring for people if you are interested uh, please email us at this uh, thank you thank you very much yes thank the speakers so we have time for a couple of questions please uh, any questions Hey, uh, thank you for the nice talk. Uh, what are your thoughts on, uh, you know, synthesizing LLMs on this kind of architecture? Uh, okay, a key a key challenge with LLM, I think, is uh, having a good RAM. I think uh, it's basically if you have a big enough memory and a fast enough memory, you have some uh, leeway into trying to run it. So we have uh, ran CNN accelerator so far. And uh, what we have noticed is the challenges we face so far, uh, LLMs make it 100 times much more difficult. Uh, but in the end, how I think naively is uh, LLMs are essentially just uh, gem operations, right? In the end, uh, training is uh, much more difficult. And I think I'm underqualified to talk about training. But so far as inference is concerned, if we can implement it, uh, and if we have a big enough RAM, I think it's uh, possible. Okay, thank you. Good question. Good answer. You have a question. Uh, Professor Nandivada has a question. Uh, yeah, sort of. I, I, I can hear you. Yeah, yeah uh, quick thing. So, this looks very exciting. From an academic perspective, do you think uh, uh, students can take these uh, Vaman chips and uh, Uh, nay, the end goal for Vicharak is to be in the hands of uh, normal consumers that don't even understand uh, what FPGAs or even computers, how they work. So, yeah, it, it's very much possible. We have designed it uh, from the get-go with, uh, with people in mind that everyone should be able to use it and we can make it, if we can make it uh, that good, uh, so that's an achievement for us. Hey, uh, I just want to know uh, what EDA uh, compiler optimizations you guys have done or uh, which EDA compilers you have targeted. Yeah, okay. Uh, so this is, I think uh, we can talk at great lengths about this. Uh, since we're running out of time, I, I would love to meet you and uh, talk about it. Uh, so uh, in, uh, in essence, we are not really trying to solve the NP hard problems. We are trying to bypass it completely uh, as it suits us. Speakers again, thank you very much. Good work.